Welcome to Never a Dull Moment. I'm Greg, and today I'm going to share with you the 20 knives of 2020. You know, I say that kind of lightly because I actually got my first knife at Christmas of 2019. My last knives I got for Christmas of 2020. So it technically is one whole year, but it's not all in 2020. So, but let's go. The 20 knives of the last year that we've collected. Um, it's an amazing collection. Uh, we haven't finished. According to my wife, we're done for a while. So we're gonna to try to keep her happy or at least not die soon. Um, I know some of you people are out there who have a spouse who's not quite aware of all the knives you've been collecting. That's all of our inside joke. Good luck with that. So we're gonna start off with this amazing knife collection by letting you see the first uh, knife here is a 270 millimeter. This is a Yunagiba by Takayuki Awai. This has a Damascus finish, okay? Uh, for a Yanagiba is a single-sided knife. If you look closely, you can actually see I've got to do some polishing. I took a brush and was cleaning the backside with soap and got some scratches on the inside, so that'll definitely help polish my polishing skills. Um, this knife is only used for slicing fish. I don't use it to bone anything. I have used it for cutting up some scallions as garnishes. I am not the humongous fish consumer. So it doesn't get as much use as we would like. Next we move to the, and that is a super blue, by the way. I did not say that is a Damascus super blue. So next we have the 270 millimeter. This is a Sujihiki made of R2 steel. So the R2 SG2 is a powdered steel. It is my first powdered steel knife. This is by uh, Kato. It has a Tashimi finish. Uh, it was not extremely sharp out of the box. I have not sharpened it yet. I heard that this type of steel was a little harder to sharpen, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna make a video on sharpening this steel for the first time. This knife is used for slicing meat, which does come up in this house occasionally. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to that adventure on such a hard steel. Uh, this knife, I would say, is definitely a prize. Um, this is a 270 millimeter. Blue number one, Hitohira Tanaka Blacksmith uh, Gyoto. It has a mirror finish with a Kasumi finish that meet. I am selective on what I cut with this because I am not a knife polisher and I'm very afraid of ruining the polish. It is highly reactive. Blue number one seems to be um, reactive and oxidized rapidly. It has started the patina very quickly. I had started off thinking 210 millimeter seemed like a very large knife. I am a fan now of this 270. It doesn't seem so small or large in my hand at all. It's something I've just gotten used to. The handle is a little thinner than I'm used to. I like it. Um, this particular handle is uh, rosewood and I love it. I just absolutely love this knife. Um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to sharpening this knife and possibly scratching it. So for all you knife polishers that are my friends in those knife forums, I will be asking for some help when it comes time to work on this knife. So next we have the, we, we referred to it as a unicorn for a while. It was very hard to find. It was always sold out. This is the Masamoto KS 240 millimeter Gyoto white number two with a blonde ferrule. It is a laser. It came in super thin. It is easy to sharpen. It is um, so easy to get it so sharp. Um, I had to learn how to have a patina on this. It was so shiny when I got it. I was not prepared for it to get a patina and lose that finish. I am used to now that as a function. Um, it's the, one of the only corporate made knives that I own. Most of them are individual artisan knives. Uh, if you are thinking about it, I know some people want to say that they're overpriced. I'm fortunate. I don't, one, I don't think it's overpriced, and two, uh, it was given to me as a gift. Uh, a friend and a client who uh, saw that he, you know, he wanted to do something nice for me, got it for me. Um, super surprise, just a treat to have, and it is a go-to knife. So the KS style became very popular. And so we have the Moritaka KS 250 millimeter Gyoto. Their Kurichi finish is none like anything else. Um, it has like a certain texture that is unique unto them. It is not quite as tall as some other knives. 
I've been able to do some unique things with this knife. The one thing I would point out with this particular knife, um, it was very sharp. I have not sharpened it yet. This is also super blue. Uh, I was not necessarily a big fan of the way that the stainless steel tang, it's stainless steel so it doesn't rust inside the handle. I, I, the way that the, the finishes when they meet, I mean, I would have loved to have seen it blend a little bit more. I know that they're welded together. I get it. Um, it doesn't obviously affect the performance in any way, shape, or form. But, you know, um, one of those blacksmiths that, you know, they have their place in history. Again, glad to add it to the arsenal. I've been using this a little bit more lately. So the next knife has a very special place because it was my very first knife. We got it uh, Christmas of 2019 along with another Masamoto we'll get to. It is a 210 millimeter super blue Karichi and Tashimi finish, hammered finish. It is super blue, but it is not oxidized as rapidly as some of the other knives. Um, I've really, it's been a low fuss knife at 210 millimeter. Um, it really has been amazing. It's the perfect size. It's a large chef knife as far as like larger than Sentokus and Bunkas. Um, it's smaller than the other. When I first got this, I thought 210 millimeters seemed so big, like the point seems so far away from my hand. Now that I'm so used to it, it's very versatile. Um, Anrayu is going to be retiring, so we know that everyone right now is scurrying. I see everyone in the forums, do you have one, can I buy one? And um, no one's ever gonna get mine, I'm sorry, they're just amazing to own. So now, the only Kuritsuke that I have, this is a Hitohira Tanaka, Blue number one, 240 millimeter Kuritsuke. It is not single bevel. Typically a Kuritsuke is single bevel. It does have a beautiful Shinogi line, which gives the illusion that the backside might be um, hollowed out and concave. It does have the matching Shinogi line on the other side. The blue number one, highly reactive metal. Um, I'm, I'm cleaning it immediately. Again, with some of you knife polishers out there, I'll be talking to you soon about how to maybe restore the finish the patina is necessary to protect the knife, and I get it. Um, again, happy to own a knife. It is really thin. The spine on this is really thin for such a big knife. I have not sharpened it yet. Um, you know, it's just the, the K-tip is a very masculine thing. I gravitate towards that. Yeah, as you'll see with some other knives that I have, a big fan of the K-tip. So again, glad to have it. That Kasumi finish that is, you know, on this side of the polish. It's just that cloudy in the middle. I just, yeah, there's something about it. Okay, so I can obviously say something unique about every knife and I'm going to because they're all unique in their own way. This particular knife, it won my heart. I did not see it coming. This is Camo R2 Damascus, 180 millimeter bunker with a pie cutlery custom handle. This particular knife is the only one that my wife is not afraid of using. It is not reactive. It is sharp. You can put it down and she doesn't have to wonder if she walks away. Um, is she going to, you know, cause it to rust or have an issue? It is gorgeous to look at. At 180 millimeter, it's a little shorter. So a woman or a child might not feel intimidated by like how large the knife is. The Damascus pattern is extremely beautiful. There's something about the way the R2 steel feels. It has not been um, sharpened by myself yet. I will be shooting a video, video on me sharpening R2 for the first time. The, the steel has a unique feeling. Um, I don't know if you own an R2, you know. There's something unique about the way the steel feels. It is extremely rigid. And uh, I didn't see it, like I said, I didn't see it out of nowhere. It really just won my heart. I actually want to give this knife as a present to um, all my children so when they go out and have a really nice knife, I don't have to worry about it oxidizing with them. This is the gift that keeps on giving and I'm excited to own one. Okay, so there is a story behind this one. This is the Kurosaki 170mm Bunka. It has a hammered Tashimi Karichi finish. Kurosaki is just this amazing blacksmith that thinks of new designs. This bunka with the K-tip, so masculine. It's like just a more manly Sentoku, great size. It's able to accommodate everything from onions to small shallots, everything you need to do. You've seen me sharpen in certain videos. This thing is an absolute laser. 
It is a super blue steel. You can tell from what you've heard, super blue is my favorite steel. Um, easy to sharpen, easy, to, I mean, it's just easy. So this knife was a hell, hell of a deal. My son had seen pictures of this. I'd sent them to him a lot. I really wanted this knife. The knife was like, never could find it for, and it was $325 and, and I was like, I don't have it, couldn't find it. And I had adopted this motto, uh, there'll always be another knife. Six months later, this knife showed up on a website for $175 brand new. No way, no way. I was glad to snatch it up. Um, the first knife I ever truly wanted, saw it, wanted, waited, got, and just absolutely love it. And now we're gonna move down just a little bit. Um, this is a shig. So Shigafusa, I am not a Santoku knife shaped fan. This Santoku was available in a shop in Europe and Sweden. It was trapped in the mail forever because of COVID. It's one of those things you almost forgot about. Um, if you know that shigs are on back order for three years, you know they're impossible to get. They do make a lot of higher dollar versions of themselves. This Karichi finish is more of a blue collar knife by them. I'm happy to say that I own one. This is again a super, okay. So there's a story behind this. The Swedish website is actually a very famous site. A lot of people use them. I'm not saying that they're wrong, but all of us who know Shig know that Shig work exclusively with Swedish steel. This steel was listed as um, super blue. Is it a website mistake by them? I mean, I trust that this site, being it's a great site, did not get it wrong. So either Shigafusa finally made a knife in super blue at some point and, and I got old stock or it's listed wrong. I have no way of verifying either way. You did see me sharpen this so sharp that I was able to slice blueberries. That's all I'm gonna say is I'm glad that I have one. It is a real shig and uh, it does oxidize like rapidly. It does have a little bit of a patina on it. I, I use it more of a onion, like a more heavy duty kind of things. Um, it is not a delicate knife. Again, glad to have it. So we have the Masamoto KS 165 millimeter white blonde ferrule. This Deba, white number two Deba, is gotten use. If I'm cleaning a fish, it's out. Thick spine, severs the head so easy. It is a single beveled knife. Um, it sharpens easy as a white number two. It gets so sharp. Again, to the knife polishers. I've been able to get it sharp, but some of the polishing needs work on the inside. I look forward to learning. I look forward to learning from you guys out there. Um, please be kind with your comments, by the way. Hopefully you're being entertained so far. If you like what we're doing, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of exciting things coming out. And if you're already a subscriber, make sure you hit that notifications button. And if you're subscribing for the first time, please hit that notifications button. Subscribing without being notified just means you're not being told we're making new stuff. So if you'll double check, make sure you've hit those notifications buttons, then you can be told like we've made a new video. Okay. So in my search for unique knife shapes, we now move to a Funayuki. Funayuki is a knife that normally is brought on the boat as utility knife. The Funayuki is a 50-50 bevel knife. This one in particular is by Yamashine. It is a white number one steel. It is my only white number one with a Karichi finish. Um, I was able to sharpen this in a video. I think we got it down to like a 63. I do think I can do better without changing the angle of the knife. I don't know if it's the blacksmith's heat treatment or maybe I could just be better. I mean, I'm a pretty good knife sharpener, so we will give it another shot. This is supposed to be the steel that can get the sharpest. And uh, we've seen me get other knives sharper. So again, is it my fault? Is it the blacksmith? I don't know. Yamashine is a name that a lot of us don't know. Funuyuki is a shape I wanted to acquire. Um, I know that Takeda also makes a Funuyuki. So I was able to glad, I was very glad to snatch up this shape. Um, this is a more of a utility knife. I have done a video where I've cleaned some fish with it. I would probably not sever a, a head of a big fish. The bone would be so big, I'd probably chip the knife. But filleting a smaller fish, no problem. 
So the next knife, this is an Ajikiri 105 millimeter. By the way, I didn't mention this was 135 millimeter Funayuki. That was 165 millimeter Daba. So this Ajikiri is 105 millimeter. You could call this Ajikiri like a wide petty. This is the Tadafusa blue number two. I might be wrong. It could be super blue, but I think it's blue number two. And I will definitely, when I get the correction, put the words like on the video and self to correct myself. This is their Nisiji line. It is inexpensive. This knife company is amazing. The Band-Aid I'm sporting is from taking off part of my thumb with this knife. It has not been sharpened yet. It is beautiful out of the box. It is sharp out of the box. It is lightweight out of the box. It is gorgeous out of the box. I'm a fan of this company. I've told this company I'm a fan of this company. If you are new to knives, instead of thinking Tajiro, go grab the, the Nisiji line from Tadafusa. I will have links to most of these knives that if they're live, they might be sold out um, to the different knife shops out there. Just incredible company. I would love to own other knife shapes by this company. Incredible. So, go, so this next knife is unique in my lineup because I didn't ask for it. It was given to me as a gift when I got the Hitahira Tanaka 270 millimeter blue number one Gyoto. I know how us knife nerds all spat off stuff like that, you know, randomly that we know. But so this is, uh, I'm going to say this wrong probably. I think it's like Higo no Kama. I might have got that right. Higo no Kama. 73 millimeter high carbon steel folding knife. It does not lock out. So there is a little bit of danger that if you're using it, it could like fold on you. It does not have a clip on it to go. So it's just something you put in your pocket. I have not taken it with me anywhere yet. It was a nice gift to receive. Um, so, you know, glad to add another knife always. Thank you. So we have a debate on the pronunciation. I do not know what's right. I like saying Sajai. I heard it's Saji. Somebody let me know. So this is the 135 millimeter Saji pairing knife. It has the stag handle. The weight is significant. Um, you feel like you're just holding something of significance. This is super blue, not always a steel of choice for this particular blacksmith. This is the most oxidative, highly reactive knife I own. I know basically I gotta be prepared to clean it the moment I cut something. Not a fan of that. It is a lot of work. If you're not used to carbon knives, there is some maintenance that has to be done. This knife reacts immediately. It has a Damascus finish halfway up the knife. It is oxidate, oxidizes into the Damascus. So it's not cladded Damascus down to the edge. Even the Damascus is super blue. Okay, so a great knife. I will I honestly will say I don't go to it a lot just because of the maintenance. I would like to own this particular blacksmith's um, Rainbow Damascus. Uh, it is on my list. I've got my eye on a 240 millimeter Sujihiki Rainbow Damascus with an ironwood handle. Not anytime soon as my wife makes a face. I've had it on my eye for like a long time now. Um, so, you know, maybe in the future. Okay. So today we were trying to learn how to say this blacksmith's name. It's written everywhere. Um, saying it is like a thing. So first off, uh, this shape is an Asuba. And we say, Kitao. Okay. I know how it's my wife's behind me with the words, okay? It's kaitaoki. It's kataoka. Ka Say it, honey. Kadeo kataoka. Kataoka. Thank you. Kataoka. Bless you. That's what I want. No. The blacksmith is a legendary blacksmith. You've definitely read about him in the famous book called A Knife Nerd's Guide to Japanese Knives. I own a copy, a signed copy, um, that doesn't have the pronunciation in there. Sorry. So, Kitaoka. Am I saying it right, honey? Kitaoka? I think so. Okay, <laughs> Kitaoka. So, I'm glad to have the producer behind the camera right there. So, this Asuba knife is meant for peeling. This is a single sided knife, it is concave on the back. I have sharpened it, it does get very sharp. It has a Damascus finish towards the blade. 
it has been reacting a little bit. And I think I need something that I don't own. I know Scott Gunn, if you're watching, you guys talk about it, maybe Andrew Bishop. It's the uh, acid that you soak to get the, bring the Damascus finish out. Uh, I think it's like furic acid. So at some point we'll end up making a purchase and maybe we can bring out the Damascus finish on this. It has a little bit of a creachy finish at the top. I use this knife. I don't know how many people need to use a peeling knife, but my wife will tell you every week I've spent a couple of dollars on English cucumbers just to practice. I want to learn a knife skill. You've got to practice. Doesn't cost a lot of English cucumbers. So we move down. We're getting towards the end. Everyone that's left is a legend. So we'll start off with another Anrayu. It is number two that I have. Um, my second Anrayu knife. This is 150 millimeter Tashimi Super Blue Honosuke bony knife. It saw a lot of use before its brother got here. Um, this particular knife has been, uh, I've had people asking to purchase now that Anrayu is retiring. I just don't see me giving up the knife. Um, I've never had to sharpen it. It's a great workhorse tool. Very happy to have it. Um, just if you haven't really seen it, I mean, it's amazing. Okay. There's nothing on here that feels like this next knife. If you own a Takeda, then you know, wow. So this Honosuke, 170 millimeter Honosuke Takeda with a custom pie cutlery handle. It is so thick at the spine, out of the box. I think it was like a 63. We did some, some work on the leather. Man, I mean, it might've been a little more, just it was still under 100 out of the box, but we put it on some leather, so many passes, it was a 50 on the best tester. The weight helps you when you're deboning a chicken. Um, how does a knife this thick get such a sharp edge? It's the steel, the heat treatment, the blacksmith, it's hundreds of years of knowing what to do. Um, it has seen work. I uh, will not set, you know, part ways with this knife. It is too unique to do that. So happy to have it. Um, the last two, we have the legend. We have the 165 millimeter Dinka. Um, this is by Fujiwara with an ebony handle. This uh, knife was trapped in Japan for months, months and months and months and months and months. They were emailing me through Facebook. Like, we're so sorry. Here's a picture of your knife, blah, blah, blah. It could not get out of Japan. The mail was not running because of COVID. And then one day it just showed up. They were amazing customer service to keep up with it. They never let you down. This Fujiwara Nakiri is so rigid. It is so thin. It is so hard. It is so sharp. It will sever anything you put in front of it. The legend of this company is that um, they invented the cladding process that we use to protect the knives. The Dinka line is considered their more luxurious line. It is a super blue steel. Again, uh, happy to have it. I do want to own the 195 millimeter Gyoto by their Dinka line. It is, they are the, one of the only companies that make that size. I think 195 millimeter will be an incredible addition to the collection. And then the last knife, it is a Japanese blacksmith who made a Chinese cleaver. So Kurosaki is young. He is not even up and coming anymore. He is just downright famous. So this Japanese blacksmith said, I want to make a Chinese cleaver. The Tashimi finish is quite unique on this knife. I have sharpened this knife to the point of slicing blueberries. It is thin. Again, custom handle pie cutlery. It is beautiful. I used it the other day to cut up everything. I know Chinese chefs use this knife, one knife for everything. I want to learn more of how to do that. So I made it a point the other day to cook an entire meal using this knife. It is thinner than your average Chinese cleaver. That, so my concern is chipping the knife. Um, I do, well, I probably will own a thicker Chinese cleaver one day. But uh, I've learned to like not shy away. Uh, this is a super blue steel. Great blacksmith. These are the knives of 2020, the 20 knives. This is the collection so far. Just so you know, my, my philosophy on collecting. My goal is to have one knife of each shape at each size. So if I have a 270 millimeter Sujihiki, there will never be another 270 millimeter Sujihiki. There might be a 240, there might be a 210, but there will never be another one at that size. 
So if I have one Karitsuke at 240 millimeter and they make a 270 and a 210, you might see the shape at a different size, but I'll never have the same knife twice. That is for me. I'm not telling you what to do. It's uh, the universe. You can do whatever you want to do. Maybe when I run out of things, then, then you might break your own rule, but that's the rule. I think there's still a lot of room. There's still a lot of knife sizes and shapes out there that haven't been collected. It takes time. It takes money. Um, all of these knives are used. That is a common question. Do I use my knives? Yes. I think every blacksmith would hate to know they made an amazing tool and the knife did not get used. So the hardest decision every day is which one are you using today? So I'm thankful for the ability to own these knives. I'm glad to be able to share them with you. I appreciate you taking the time to watch us on this channel. Please, if you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the notifications bell to be notified. Um, my wife and I, we thank you for watching the channel. We're trying to do some unique things. We have ideas. We're pursuing some new stuff for you to make the world a little better. As always with us, it's never a dull moment. We're hoping for you. There's never a dull moment. We want to just say to you, God bless and thank you.